It's accountancy package. Um, all right, we, we're going to hear from, uh, from a man who's had a, a number of, of startups and, and uh, uh, businesses in Africa around uh, payments. Um, Emilian Popa is uh, the CEO of African Internet Accelerator, uh, and he has two co-presenters. And what they're going to talk about is enabling and accelerating e-commerce in Africa, which of course is the big... The next big thing, isn't it? The Economist says 80% of all mobile money transactions in the world, hello Michelle, are uh, happening in East Africa. So that is directly what's happening with M-Pesa. Why hasn't, why hasn't this taken off? Let's ask a million. Good morning, everyone. Missing the clicker. Okay, excellent. So, great, uh, great numbers earlier from uh, from Paul um, related to Africa. Um, very encouraging. Um, let's do a quick reality check. You see, see that that's, that's indeed what's happening in Africa. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if you know where this image comes from. Any any guess? Lagos. Yeah, it's a market in Lagos. Last year in May, um, I landed with another two guys in Lagos um, with a bright idea of launching um, the first and the biggest e-commerce company in Nigeria. Yeah, I landed 1 p.m. Uh, the passport guy asked me to put $50 in my passport to let me in the country. Uh, got into a taxi, it took me three hours to get downtown Lagos, saw this. I called back my travel agency, I said, hmm, I think I'm going to fly back tomorrow to Cape Town. Yeah? Um, Surprisingly enough, the company that, that we launched at that time called initially Kasua and afterwards Jumia performs particularly well today in Nigeria. So that was the first, kind of the first reality check in Lagos. Now, wha what do we, th do we think that the retail is going to look like in the next five years? Yeah. This comes from a movie with Tom Cruise. This comes from Tesco. So the future of retail is going to be multi-channel shopping. Yeah, that's what the experts say. People in the next few years will start buying online, going to the store, picking up themselves some items, having the rest of the items shipped by the store back, buying on their mobile, buying on their tablets. It's going to be multi-channel. Yeah? Also, experts think that the front store of the store, the front, the front of the stores will shrink. We see here, you know, stores become smaller and smaller in front, they become bigger and bigger in the back because of the fulfillment. Um, mobile, yeah? Everyone has a mobile phone, everyone has a smartphone in this, in this room. Um, same day delivery. I was in Berlin two weeks ago at an insurance conference, and uh, the, a lady from Google uh, now uh, was speaking, and um, Google is using those um, you know, amazingly nicely cars, uh, mini, mini Coopers, uh, shipping door to door in less than two hours. Uh, because you know, people buy 80% of their purchase in the next in the 15 kilometers from their home. So, is that profitable? Probably not. I mean, how much it costs for a driver in a car to go ship to your home in the in one hour your groceries? Yeah. Augmented reality. We see that coming. Yeah, you go in, in, in subways in Tokyo or in, in Seoul, and you start seeing those panels. You scan the items. Yeah, you get them home in the next couple of hours. Big data. Yeah, we heard earlier from Dave. Uh, big data is super important. So, how do we get from here to here in Africa in the next years? It's a good question. So, I think that there, are, there are big opportunities. It's nothing, uh, nothing to say uh, uh, against that. Um, Nigeria undeveloped formal retail. We saw the markets. I think there are a couple, like two or three big shopping malls in Lagos, only for a 20 million people city. South Africa, completely different, big retail, a big offline retail. Um, Selection, product selection. You want to buy something online here. Yeah, you have the choice probably between Color High and Take A Lot and a couple of fashion companies. Uh, not much choice. Yeah, so there is an opportunity. Um, mobile penetration. I was looking into a few stats earlier. Um, South Africa, for instance, there are about 11 million smartphones in this country. Yeah? Uh, if we look at the total penetration of phones, 
there are about 30% blackberries, about 30%, actually about 40% blackberries, about 30% um, feature phones, and the rest of the 30% is a mix of probably about 10% um, uh, iOS and 20% Android. So Blackberry is probably dying sometime soon. Um, uh, feature phones are replaced, are being replaced by, by smartphones. There are a few people in this room who will present <coughs> later probably uh, about um, uh, very, very cheap uh, smartphones, very cheap tablets coming from China, from India, from other countries, dumped into Africa. So this is changing. So huge opportunity. Yeah? But there are big challenges. If you look at how big is Africa, there are about 850 million people um, in about 25, 30 markets, very fragmented. Very young population, yeah, 19, 21 years old on, on average. Um, but what is the GDP of Africa? Yeah, it's actually smaller than the, the GDP of UK. I think 1.7 trillion dollars uh, uh, from, from Paul's numbers earlier. Um, how many people are online? It's about 90, 85, 90 million people. Um, how many people shop online? Very small. South Africa, 50 million people, about seven, 15 to 17 million people uh, having internet access on a, on a desktop. Out of them, only 10% have ever purchased something online. And out of 1.5, 1.7 million people. Out of those ones, half purchased travel. So we talk about a very small market. Yeah? If you look at Africa in general, there are a couple of countries <coughs> counting. South Africa, Nigeria, maybe Kenya, now. And in those countries, where can you do retail, online retail? Big cities, big concentrations. Yeah, there are about 10, 8 to 10 cities. Johannesburg, Lagos, um, Nairobi, uh, maybe Luanda. So it's not big. Yeah? It's about 40 million people in those, in those uh, big uh, urban agglomerations. Supply. Where do you get a product? Yeah? So we, do, we have a fashion company, a furniture company, and a kids, like a diapers.com type company. Some local suppliers, a lot of international suppliers. Difficult to bring into the country, fast, moving items, huge um, custom duties. We pay 40% for importing fashion from China or for Europe. Um, internet penetration and connectivity, I, I mentioned earlier. Infrastructure. Uh, shipping in New York uh, a bag of vegetables. It's easy, right? You have a high concentration of people in the same area. Shipping in South Africa or even Nigeria, it's much more difficult. The cost of shipping is huge, right? We pay up to seven, seven dollars, six to seven dollars to ship something from Johannesburg to Cape Town door to door. Same day delivery, difficult. We work with 10 shipping companies. We needed to build ourselves our own distribution in Cape Town and Johannesburg because there's no one doing it better than ourselves. It's not that you know, FedEx or, or DHL, like in Germany, you pay one and a half dollars and you send every package or package from a place to the other place. Returns, support, logistics is, is, is difficult. Yeah? Because of the data, video content. Yeah? The, video, the, the video is the next image. Downloading data on, on, on your, on your Fiji phone is expensive. However, one of the big opportunities is mobile payments. Africa accounted last year for 38% of all the payments, mobile payments in the world. So the question is, what are those markets in Africa where it, it, it makes sense to, um, to launch and to run an e-commerce company? Like any, any guess from you how much, what would be the, kind of the, the, uh, the annual uh, sales for an e-commerce company to, to, to break even? $50 million, $100 million, $200? It's about $100. Yeah? So you need to sell a lot to make any money at a future time. So it's a huge... It's a huge volume of sales. So you need to sell probably for about $500,000 a day of, uh, of goods to make money at a future stage. So we talk about two free cities in South Africa, how big is your company, how, many, how much products can you sell to make it. Yeah. What are the markets now? I, I believe there are two markets in, in, in Africa which count today, South Africa and Nigeria. Yeah, South Africa, including the kind of the neighboring countries, you can ship to, to Namibia, you can ship to Ghana, and Northern Africa. Um, Kenya, probably coming a bit later, in a couple of years from now. Central and Western Africa, we see, we see, uh, you know, we see uh, companies like Rocket Internet launching um, 
um, retail, online retail in, in uh, Ivory Coast, in, um, uh, in uh, Cameroon, in Gabon, I think it's going to take a while. I think it's going to take a lot of time. Angola, uh, someone mentioned earlier about, about Luanda, big place, internet penetration very low. Other markets, very fragmented, very costly to develop operations. I wouldn't build a warehouse now in, 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 in Angola. Uh, it would be way too costly. Yeah. So what is kind of the, like the, um, the recipe? So we, we see the situation today. We think how long it's going to take to make it. What is the recipe to, uh, to build a successful e-commerce company? I think um, Remo, um, um, Remo and I and, and Niels um, have been working a lot on hiring people. I mean, talent is, I think, number one, uh, number one challenge in, in, in Africa to hire. So Remo, you want to uh, talk a bit about uh, you know, how difficult or how easy it is to hire people here? Recruitment clearly is one of the key, especially for new beginning a new e-commerce and a new startup in a country like South Africa, where there is not too much uh, ecosystem in terms of online business and online penetration from an e-commerce point of view as well as from uh, existing bricks and mortar that they try to be online. Um, the uh, perception is always that when we do recruitment, we try to post an ad and we try to wait for CV and people that are trying to uh, reply to this. Our approach to recruitment was very, was very active. So we try to look for the people. We go to the best business school in South Africa, but in Africa in general, as well as overseas, and try to get the best talent to come on board. They can help us to run this business effectively. And this also because we try to make a very entrepreneurial uh, environment, very, start, very startup oriented, flat organization, that we can really give a great opportunity in terms of learning to anyone that uh, straight away from the school would like to make a career in an industry that is not take off yet in, the, uh, in this country. We saw this and also in other places outside Africa, we also try to replicate this model here. And we see that this active recruitment giving um, people, young people, the opportunity to do something that is growing double digit every week is really something that is very exciting on, uh, on our side. And this combined with our entrepreneurial mindset and the entrepreneurial spirits with a high capital intensive industry like e-commerce is really making uh, to us a pretty, pretty good success. Um, however, there are, there are a few challenges also we, we need to take in, in consideration when we launch a, um, a fast growing startup like this. And this is mainly from an IT point of view. That's why also Niels would like to share some uh, information in terms of how also we build a sustainable platform from an IT perspective for companies that make 10 orders day one and one other orders in, ten, uh, in day 10, which is also very easy, very, uh, very big challenge and is very um, um, hard to scale up in a very short time. Yeah, thank you, Remo. Um, <clears throat> maybe another comment on, on the people and skills issue. Um, fact is that there is not really enough skills here in, in Africa, um, especially in terms of tech. I interviewed people in Nigeria, uh, some 20 people. My opening question was, what is the payment gateway? Have you ever worked with the payment API? And there was no answer. Um, so I think that makes it difficult. And then you end up with uh, people with funny accents like us, right? Um, <laughs> but I think it's also important, um, one of the learns, learnings is as well that um, it doesn't work that you only use internationals like us. Um, and also, so that's not only people from Europe and the States, but also I don't think a South African can necessarily um, open a business or run a successful business in Nigeria because you need someone local, right? Um, so always try to get uh, local people, someone who understands the market, and add some uh, skills from international people. Um, yeah, and I mean, if you're in countries like Nigeria, I guess you need to be flexible. Um, I still remember when, when we arrived there, we finally found an office, um, but then the, the power went off like 12 times a day. Um, and until the route rebooted and you were back at work again, uh, it took like 10 minutes, so you lose like one and a half hours every day. So we said, cool, let's get a generator. So uh, we bought a generator. Um, we pressed the start button just to realize that we need to buy like 2,000 liters of diesel. Um, so I think it's, it's, it's interesting, um, and that comes back to the IT platform. So I think if you, if you launch um, an e-commerce business here, it's not all about the platform. Take one of the uh, plug-and-play solutions like Magento uh, or maybe also WordPress um, and rather concentrate on the back-end part, build a good warehouse system, um, invest in CIM, um, collect data, um, 
and learn about the market. <coughs> good, so a good example of, of, of our experience in Nigeria. I think um, logistics, another big challenge. So um, we started here in Cape Town um, um, two years ago. We're shipping from our office. In Lagos, when we started with Jumia, we're shipping from the office. The office was uh, a dorm room, uh, an office, and a warehouse. Um, build delivery solutions ourselves. So we have currently in Cape Town and Johannesburg our own drivers. In Lagos, we're building, we build up 20 fleet people running motorbikes across Lagos uh, from day one. Yeah? Um, product, buying product. I mentioned earlier, uh, not easy to find product here locally. Uh, you need buyers. So depending on the category that you, you decide to, to launch, is that fashion, electronics, or, or something else, you need good, uh, good buyers. Test, test first. So what we do now uh, with, uh, with um, our free company, Style36, uh, uh, Five Rooms and Kinderello, we bring small quantities of products from China, from the UK, from somewhere else. We test them, we see if they work, and then we buy bigger quantities. Yeah. Um, connectivity, think mobile. If I was to start now an e-commerce company, I would not build a website. I would build a uh, mobile site. Um, I would build an app first. And then from that, go into a, to a website. Uh, payments. Yeah? Um, Nigeria, 95% uh, uh, cash on delivery. Uh, South Africa, probably 50% cash on delivery. Adapt payments to the local market. People buy, people pay cash. Yeah? Uh, very important, building a customer-centric organization. So that's a small market. How can you make it happen? You need to build a brand. It's not only, e-commerce is about execution in general, I would, in any country in the world. I would say in South Africa, in Africa in general, it's about branding as well. Yeah. So just a quick, um, uh, to, to finish, just a quick um, 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 image of what we do. Um, so we accelerate, we build, we start, build, and run online companies uh, using a common infrastructure, a common platform, a common team. Uh, we have three companies currently, five rooms, it's a kind of IKEA online, um, selling homeware, furniture, um, and uh, lighting. Style36.coza is kind of like a Zappos, Zappos online. So we sell f uh, fashion for men, women, uh, and, uh, and uh, so shoes and uh, apparel. And we launched a couple of months ago a company called Kinderello. Same thing uh, for kids. Yeah? So because of the scarcity of resources, because of the cost of doing business, we decided to build one team and we serve every single business that we do with the same team. We can add very fast anything else to what we do because we serve with the same marketing, with the same IT, with the same warehouse, um, uh, the, the various businesses um, that we launch. Thank you. <laughs> any, any questions? Hello, okay. Um, a quick question, is Zando not part of your stable? No, Zando, no, Zando uh, is part of Rocket Internet, uh, uh, is, uh, which, uh, which some of us, uh, including myself, launched in South Africa in uh, January 2012. Okay, so main question. You mentioned um, that, a s that an e-commerce site, unless I heard incorrectly, needs to be turning $500,000 a day to make money. Can you just give us some context to that? Because there's no sure. e-commerce site in the country sure. that's doing e anywhere near that. Sure, e exactly. So I, I think that's like a, like a generic number. It depends on the market, depends on the category, depends on, on you know, how fast and how big you want to be. I strongly believe that if you want to make money in e-commerce, you need to scale up. Because e-commerce it's, it's e is like a machine. It's like you have to optimize every single piece of what you do at the unique economic uh, uh, base. You need to have the smallest marketing cost, the smallest operating cost, the smallest everything to make any money. Let's imagine that you buy a product for, you buy a product for, hundred, uh, for $50, right? And you sell it for 100 Well, let's see, let, let's, let's see. Our average basket value on, on, on fashion is about 500 grand, yeah? So $50. We buy it for 25 we make 25 right? Gross margin. Out of 25 we're gonna pay marketing 35 to 40 so we may remain with 10, 15 dollars. We're gonna pay shipping, 10, zero. Uh, we're gonna pay warehouse, minus. We're gonna pay people, 150, 160 people, minus 100. So we lose money. 
and we're going to lose money, and any, any single e-commerce company in, in this country at a certain size loses its money. You can always you know, start and uh, get three people in a, in, a, in, a, in a meeting room and start selling something online, put a small store. Will you ever scale? I, I have a lot of friends um, uh, launching e-commerce companies in Cape Town, small. Yeah? They may cover their salaries unless they have a, a big funding, they will never going to make it. So why I'm saying that it's hundreds, whatever, uh, you know, half a million dollars a, a day in sales, um, in order to be able to sell, to make any money, you have to sell an, a, an Im important number of products every day. You need to sell maybe 10,000 orders, maybe 15,000 orders a day to break even. Yeah? At, a, at, a, at an average basket value of, say, uh, you know, 50 to 70 dollars, you get to this number. Yeah? I, I mean, I, I'm looking into other countries as well, companies in Russia, big e-commerce companies in Russia, uh, or, or China, or, or um, um, they, haven't uh, they haven't broke even at $2 million a day of sales. Do I have time to ask a question? You do. Okay, cool. Um, so I, want, I have a question and a quick comment. The comment is with Nigeria, for instance, I mean, it is crazy unbanked. I don't know how the hell Jimmy is actually doing business in Nigeria. Um, but are you seeing a lot of success with Jumia? I mean, there's a lot of press, but is it an actual monetary success? Are they actually making money? And from what you said, it doesn't seem like any e-commerce uh, store in Africa should really be doing business because they're just all not breaking even. So that's um, kind of my comment. And the question is, uh, do you think it's a problem with Africa because there isn't an e-commerce or an online shopping culture? So a lot of people, like, even people in this room, I don't know how many people actually consistently shop online. I don't buy clothes online because I think you have to go in there to right. try and close. I buy books and DVDs yeah. and, and electronics, but I won't buy clothes online. Yeah. Do you think there's a, there's a culture yeah. that, there's, yeah. that Africa doesn't have to shop online? Yeah. Look, I mean, I, I'm not involved in Nigeria anymore. Uh, we were involved, um, all of us, when we were in Rocket Internet here. Uh, I, I just hear numbers and I see uh, press releases. So yes, yes, Jumia is successful. Yes, Conga, which is the other big uh, um, Amazon-type company in Lagos, is successful as well. What does it mean successful? Yeah? They, they grow at probably a, a 30, 40 percent uh, month on month because they started here and they get there, right? Um, they don't make money. I mean, they, 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 they probably are you know, two, three, four years from break even. I haven't seen any company in this world breaking, in, in, breaking even in less, than, in less than four years and a half. The only big e-commerce retailer is Zalando, which broke even after four years and a half, only in the core markets in Germany, Switzerland, and Austria. That's all. Yeah? Amazon, how many? Ten years. Zappos uh, hasn't broken even. Um, so, so yes, Jumia is growing, or Conga is growing, or we're growing, but it's going to take a while to make money. Yeah? And I strongly believe that in those markets, like South Africa, like Nigeria, like other big, uh, big African markets, it's a one or two winners take it all. Yeah? There's no point to have ten fashion e-commerce companies. One will win, maybe two. Yeah? And to, to answer the, your second question, which is, peop, do people buy online? Yes, they buy. Lagos, it takes three hours to move from here to here to buy a mobile phone. They buy online. Thank you very much, Emilian and everybody else. Thank you.